it's your path, not the path of those around you. Definitely, it's your story, not others, and that you're the one who paved it. You're the main character in your story, not in theirs. And so focus on your story and how you could emerge into that. And it's all your choice. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Homework Help Show. I'm your host, Patricia, and this podcast is your one-stop shop for advice, motivation, and inspiration. So whether you're in the journey of your educational career or have finished that season in your life, there's always a lesson we hope to impart. Today, our guest is a theater student from USC, and she's also one of Homework Help Global's newest influencers. Please welcome our guest for today, Jasmine Aquino. Hi. Hi. How are you doing? I am doing all right. It's pretty chilly here. How are you? Really? Where are you in the world right now? How is it chilly there? You're in California, obviously, right? Yes. I live in Los Angeles, but it's winter break, so I'm staying in San Diego with one of my aunts at the moment. Okay, so are you originally from San Diego and you just go to LA for school or have you lived anywhere else in the world? I am actually from Japan. I was born and raised um, around the Tokyo area. Mm -hmm. Um, I grew up as a military child, so my dad is in the military, so... Mm -hmm. I grew up moving throughout different military bases growing up, but I moved to Los Angeles for university. And that was how long ago that you moved to LA? I moved here just over a year ago. You're a freshman in college, right? Um, I'm actually a sophomore, so it's my second year. So you've lived in Japan. You're pretty much new to the US, pretty much like a year so old there. Um, Have you lived anywhere else? in the world so I actually moved to Washington state when I was younger Mm -hmm. I don't really recall I was more of a baby at that time (laughs) so after being able to live there for like a little bit of my life I ended up going back to Japan with my family and my dad served a couple more tours till he retired okay so that you're, you're all pretty much settled there now He's retired. Your mom's retired. Do you have any siblings? Um, I have an older sibling and they study occupational therapy at a different university. I love that. And for you, how did you know? Because you are a theater student. Has being a theater student always been in like the, the path, the goal for you? Have you always like dreamt this even as a kid? So for theater, I really enjoy this. I started acting when I was about 13 in oh, wow. my high school department or mm-hmm. rather a club. It was really weird. Um. Mm-hmm. So my high school is known for Mark Hamill, the person who plays like Luke Skywalker, etc. And I just find it so odd how we had this huge presence about acting, but we had no acting classes provided. And so I was very fortunate to be in a club. And so I joined it when I was in middle school, actually. They let me in early, I guess. So I was like, mm-hmm. oh, thanks. And I just kept acting ever since. And I was really fortunate to have some very passionate mentors and faculty to guide me through that path. But I was also very fortunate to have worked in media at the same time with my high school's newscast and Mm -hmm. so that's when I found a passion for social media Mm -hmm. and so I I just recently added um, I'm in the process of adding adding my double major in public relations now at the school Mm. school of Annenberg at USC and so I'm really excited to see where I could intertwine the two in different ways and I think it's a really cool intersection. I really think so too and you're so lucky to have had that experience even as a younger student and it's it's made you realize the path you wanted to take now and as as an adult like everything tied in together. Um, We'll talk about more about your student life but to start if you could like tell us how student life is in USC. What's the culture like in your school? I actually just got hired as a tour guide as a USC ambassador. Oh, congratulations. So, thank you. It's been a really cool couple of months of mm-hmm. training. And so I really get to dive into student life even more than I already have. So mm-hmm. that's a pretty cool thing I'm really excited about. What I can say and what I really appreciate about USC is how multi-hyphenated our students are. Our students really have massive passions. And so USC has um, a huge thing about allowing its students to thrive and apply themselves into different paths of life as of careers that they're interested in. So one cool fact could be our marching band. You would think it's full of music students, but it's actually 40% engineering students. Wow. And we just have so many multi-hyphenate students here that I'm very thankful to cross pathless. Um, everyone's always doing something cool or mm-hmm. researching like a really cool thing about sleep or brainwaves. Um, we have a huge thing about students 
minoring in multiple things. I've met triple minors. I've met double majors. There's me. Yeah. I'm a double major. Um, and so I just really am fortunate to reach for classes and things that aren't related to my major. And for instance, I'm actually taking a gerontology class next semester, wow. which is about the study of human aging. That is nowhere near where I'm. <laughs> what made you like <laughs> want to take a class on like, is it geriatrics? Like that's really fascinating. Was it just um, like out of I... like the diversity that your school kind of like accommodates for? Or what made you like want to take such a class? It's like so far from like theater and media. <laughs> Every school has their general education credits. And so I was trying to get um, one of my sciences out of the way. And I found gerontology and most people were like, let me take a so-and-so class. But I, I found gerontology and I was quite intrigued. It's a study mm -hmm. of human aging. And so we get to learn a lot about some healthy habits to get retrieved as we grow, et cetera. And so I thought that was really cool as, I mean, I'm getting like, older. Yeah, it's really relevant older. to I want know. to learn how I could retrieve this information and use it in the future. And that's the thing I really enjoy. I know some people or an aspect that might be in one's brain is taking general education credits or just to get them out of the way so that you don't have to deal with them. Mm -hmm. But I believe every general education class I've taken at USC has really formed my mindset and really attributed to what I think about and what I try to incorporate in projects I do. And so, for instance, my first TE when I entered USC was on Korean culture film. And I actually joined it because all five of my classes I had lined up all were full. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you're 17, you're getting ready for college and you don't get any class you want. That could be a little devastating in the moment. <laughs> yeah. But I've learned like every class has really like taught me things that I never would have learned if I hadn't taken them. Mm -hmm. And so I'm very fortunate for all the faculty that go to our school and for anyone who goes to our school because people work hard to get into here and they're really passionate about what they do, even if it's smaller, uh, short term or long term. It sounds like a really great institution and that really goes into like what I wanted to ask you, which is, was USC your first choice or were there other universities that you had in mind? USC is actually my dream school. Mm -hmm. So I'm very fortunate to be Congratulations. here. Congratulations. I knew about, <laughs> thank you. I actually knew about USC when I was younger, just because um, one of my aunts actually worked at Keck School of Medicine. Mm -hmm. And so I remember when I was in America, I would visit in the summer. And as a child, we visit the USC campus and I had slight memories about it. I grew up wearing USC merch, um, not very often, but I did have it in the back of my closet every once in a while. And so my junior year came 2020. Oh, that's the COVID year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was really fortunate to be accepted for a full ride scholarship for their USC summer military scholarship program. Yeah. And so I was able to have an acting intensive for the year. And I was supposed to come to California for the first time in ever. I was really excited. It's going to be my first time so far away from my parents. Mm -hmm. It's usually my dad's the one who's gone. So now yeah. it's me. It's like, <laughs> <on> deployment. <laughs> yeah. But then COVID happened, unfortunately. But I was very fortunate to had the opportunity to pursue this um, summer intensive online. So I did it on Zoom. I met the faculty. I met some really cool folk. And I was very thankful to have been inspired by these professors in the industry who were actively working on the side of this mm -hmm. job um, in the entertainment. And it was just so inspiring to meet them and hear their stories and to learn their how they apply these skills to acting and beyond. And so um, I was really even more inspired to go to USC. And then I applied and I was very fortunate to get in. It was really funny just because for a majority of my time in high school, I was very nailed to the fact that I was going to become a lawyer. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, That's a big jump. <laughs> yeah. And that happened. Mm -hmm. And I think this is what was meant to be. And I'm very thankful that this is the path unfollowed. Was that class that you took uh, during the summer that really tilted your choice into going to theater? Because obviously, Obviously, you said you've been acting already when you were younger, but then you wanted to pursue law. What was like the actual tipping point for you to be like, you know what, I'm just going to bite the bullet and actually take theater because this is what my passion probably is. We could talk about my first mock trial meeting. <laughs> okay. we'll talk about, sure, we'll talk about I'd love to hear theater. about that. Yes. Okay, sure. So I had actually been looking into colleges since about the summer of my before my sophomore year. Mm -hmm. And I was set on a number of schools. I was looking in their law programs. I was very set on focusing on it based off 
a television show, which maybe <laughs> Is I was more suits? inspired by the acting than the mm-hmm. actual law. And so I was really dedicated to a show called Degrassi, The Next oh, Generation. Okay. And so a couple of the characters were really intrigued by law and um, focusing on family law and Mm -hmm. helping with those kind of crises and I was really inspired by that but looking back maybe I was inspired by the acting in it (laughs) (laughs) and so I was really intrigued by that I did some reading Um, I joined mock trial for a little bit in my high school but I remember there came a point that I was there and I was speaking on the little stage we had in the front of the classroom and a lot of these people were very passionate mm-hmm. and I thought it was really beautiful, but there was something holding me back that felt off. Like maybe this wasn't meant for me. Mm-hmm. And so not too long after that, I got casted for my first lead role in high school, which I was very excited for. And I was casted for Ariel and the Little Mermaid. Um, oh, I love that. I'm not very a musical theater girl now. I really mm-hmm. appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Um, but in the moment, I was very thrilled to be taking on that role. We performed for elementary schools, um, middle schools, and then our community. And Mm -hmm. it was a very um, fun time before COVID started. And so that was one of my turning points because I remember after my opening night, some of the children came up to me Mm -hmm. and um, they wanted to take photos. And usually when you're in high school, you're like, oh, yeah, take a photo with me. Um, But one of them came up to me and they'd never seen Ariel portrayed by a Filipino American who's brown and so that was one of the sparks that made me realize oh maybe I should pursue acting and try to make even the tiniest bit of a difference Mm -hmm. and although it's not in Broadway maybe as what (laughs) my younger mind would have thought yet um, at least (laughs) I'm happy to make some sort of a footprint and that is why I really want to focus on um, Gen Z entertainment and focusing on how I could provide my mindset into helping and supporting artists as they grow into this field. I love that. Um, One thing that's like a takeaway I want to point out from your experience is how important it is for students to immerse themselves in different ways. Like you wouldn't have known that law wasn't for you had you been part of those mock trials in the past. And it's really important for students to try out different things and different avenues to really hone in into what they're really passionate about. And you found that out through being casted in a musical, even though you never probably thought, you know, of that in your path. And one thing that I wanted to ask you that you had brought up already is you being a Filipino American who wants to pursue acting. I wanted to ask this a little later on in in an interview, but since you already brought that up, I did see that on your Instagram specifically that you said you wanted to represent Asian Americans and people of color in the entertainment industry. I wanted to ask, like, when did you realize that there was this existing bias and lack of representation for people of color in the media. Returning back to my summer program that was I was fortunate to be in, I was very fortunate to have had that experience um, with musical theater. Mm-hmm. Um, but what really engrinded it was one of my professors. I had a professor named Ronnie Jo, um, and he's like in the acting industry. Um, he was in Easter Sunday, if you watched that movie. Um, and he told us, his reason for acting was one of his closing statements before ending our time together for a month. And he talked about his experiences in acting and why he does it. And it was really a big turning point for me to realize that I was very fortunate. I'd never had a Filipino um, professor before. Mm. Um, and it, I didn't realize till that point they were talking to me I was looking back at all my education which I was very fortunate to meet these amazing um, teachers but I, I'd never met someone like them mm-hmm. and it made me realize I, I want to make an impact like how you do and so they were a really big reason as to why I do acting they were like one of the sparks that really inspired me to pursue this and so as time went on I went to college and I met very um, positive voices that talked about this pop topic and I came to the realization of diversity is always growing mm-hmm. and I'm very thankful for that especially at a school so um, rigorous in applying that but I, I want to contribute to the situation rather than just checking a box that aligns with like okay now we have a diverse cast let's check that off Mm -hmm. um we just added an equity um director let's check that off I would really love for there to come a point in time where we no longer have to say we need more diversity in this room there just is diversity 
-hmm. And rather than searching for roles of ethnically ambiguous, et cetera, I love for there to be a day where it's just, we're looking for this role Mm -hmm. and diversity is just common knowledge. It's not something that we have to fight for, though we are doing that right now. I'd love for there to come a day where it's It's part of the norm. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I totally get what you're saying. And that's such a beautiful thing to aspire to. I think it's so impactful as well, especially an example of this that I can think of at the top of my head was just like pop culture is when Haley was cast as the new Little Mermaid. Little Mermaid. Mm-hmm. Right? And there were so many um young Black children who when they saw Ariel on that trailer, that was such an impactful moment for them because they had never seen, you know, someone who represented them in media. And I think that's something that should be the norm. Absolutely. You know, I, I've heard like casting directors like specifically looking for people of color just to fill in like you said that just so they can say that there's diversity but it's almost like forced you know it's not just like oh we're looking for this role and whoever no matter what race they're from as long as they can commit to the role then you know we're willing to take them I feel like media has changed over the years we're absolutely more inclusive now but I think there's still a lot of room to grow and I think you will be you know one of the pioneers to making that happen and I hope to see that in the future and I really commend you for you know wanting to inspire other people of color more brown girls and boys out there you know to be inspired and see someone in the media that looks like them and inspires them I think that's really beautiful besides you being an actress uh, you're also you know on top of being a college student you're also a digital creator I wanted to ask you how you balance these like two huge responsibilities while, you know, simultaneously excelling in both of them. I never saw myself becoming a digital creator, mm-hmm. but I'm very thankful for where um for the opportunities it's brought me. I used to do it for fun. It mm-hmm. was just a fun thing. I would make videos of my times back in Japan and the things I would do. And then I came to LA and I started realizing how much larger that could be, especially in relation to my double major in public relations. And so not only have I tried applying that to myself, but I've learned to balance that in a way that's not just for my personal channel, but also for different things I'm in. And so a really cool thing that I just joined um, this past semester was a magazine. And I never saw myself working for a magazine mm-hmm. on my campus. Um, I don't think I ever would have done that if I hadn't ran into that opportunity with some mm-hmm. really um, cool creatives on my campus. And so especially by making time rather than giving extra time to that, which is a big thing I'm about. I love making time for things that I want to do, not giving it my extra time. I've learned to make calendars, et cetera, organize such projects so that they could come out as beautiful as they can be. And I was able to balance that time with my magazine, with my work study life and my own personal life. And so through that opportunity, I've expanded that to my own personal goals, like even just making time to journal, making time to focus on writing emails for like internships, etc. I believe it's really helped me in balancing my own channel. Mm -hmm. And so that's something I'm very thankful for. Um, A lot of students actually aspire to do something similar to what you do, which is like balancing school and having like a side hustle or like a a passion project. Um, What advice would you give people who want to start a career in social media? Just do it. (laughs) The algorithm, it's not always going to be perfect. Instagram Mm -hmm. is always changing things around. But just because you upload something and it doesn't get the engagement you want, Mm -hmm. doesn't mean you should stop. Mm -hmm. I've had times where I might have a video that only reaches out to like only the hundreds. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden I'll have a video that reaches over 10K. And so just keep doing it, learning, finding your niche is hard. And I'm Mm -hmm. still in the middle of crossing my niches Mm -hmm. and just trying to stick to one. But try the different ways of uploading. See if voiceovers work for you. See if no voiceovers work for you. Mm -hmm. See if fashion works. See if editing or just one take videos are good. Learn what your audience enjoys and focus on a niche. I'm developing that. Mm -hmm. And I'm not perfect, but I'm surely learning by every video I upload yeah. and every post I make what people are interested in with my particular channel. And so try the trend, try the video. If it doesn't work out, that's okay. And sometimes the engagement on things don't show up till later, later on. Yeah. And that's okay. 
because that shows that you didn't stop because one video didn't go well. Yeah. You kept going until you found what works out. I love that. Uh, do you have any like processes for creating content? Uh, Cause like, I know it's hard to like always stay inspired and always keep up with trends. Um, so what, what works for you so far? I know you're still trying to find your niche, but do you have a process? How do you like get inspiration and where does it come from? I'm starting to follow a niche in fashion and beauty. And I'm really excited about that. And that's what I'm focusing on for my next couple of reels, just because Instagram started this thing about monetization of reels. And so I'm really excited about that. I've never been paid to make videos mm -hmm. and so that's really exciting I just make whatever aligns with me and they said that we'll see where it goes from there so that's an exciting thing I have going on um but what really gets me inspired is just what makes me happy and so I have this thing of if I get ready in the morning like I put my makeup on I choose a really good outfit it gets me going through the day even if I don't have a lot to do mm -hmm. or if I have a lot to do it really gets me motivated and I started realizing this is just for me what if I shared it with my audience mm -hmm. and so then I I did my first fashion video and the amount of like saves and sends actually increased compared to my other videos mm -hmm. and I started to realize well maybe I should start incorporating this into what I do and so that's been a niche I've been trying to follow that um has been really inspiring and really fun I love making a good outfit in the morning and mm -hmm. I started on makeup and I feel like a lot of people interest there's a massive intersection with makeup and people who follow this kind of content and so that is a big inspiration for me um but I'd really love to start working on content that's related to mental health that's a big thing mm -hmm. I made one video about it and it did pretty good and I think I want to start incorporating that a little more just because we talked about workload and although I'm able to balance it there are times where it's not always going to be 100% Absolutely. And so I'd really love to incorporate that in my work in the future. I did one video on that mm -hmm. and I'd really like to do more of it, um, especially with my magazine, just because we follow um, similar content to We're Not Really Strangers and the content they make is something I really am inspired by. Um, I love the simplicity of it. I love how it's straightforward. Um, it's shot on an iPhone. I just love that because not everyone has a phone. And mm -hmm. so being able to make things with those kind of resources is something that I really admire that organization for because I feel like it connects to how related we all are as people on media. I love that you're finally finding your niche. And I love that thing where you say if you have a good outfit on and you feel good about yourself, that translates to the rest of the day. I feel like I'm pretty similar. It's about like if you feel good on the outside, it reflects back and you feel good on the inside. So anyone listening out there who like isn't motivated, just like wear your favorite outfit to school and see how that changes your day. I think that would be amazing. I wanted to ask you, has there ever been a situation where you had to prioritize work over school? This could be like your content creating or maybe you have like a club in school that you join some mm -hmm. extracurriculars. Have they ever gotten in the way of each other? And how do you yes. like fix that? Mm -hmm. So I can speak on probably the beginning of 2022. I had a really um, big break from social media. I didn't mm -hmm. upload as many videos as I used to. Mm -hmm. I went on a couple months hiatus of focusing on my classes just because I was taking double G's to cover my my double major it was a lot on me and so I had to focus truly on my grades and I also had to focus on writing some um, skits for my cultural organization because we had a performance coming up um, in the later months and so I really focused all my time and effort into those things I really mm -hmm. wanted the products of those to come out fruitful and I didn't want to make content that was lazy and just mm -hmm. made with my extra time I wanted to make time for it and so I didn't upload as much as I used to and it was a little I think I was validly upset that I wasn't able to make time for it but I was very thankful that I did take that time to focus on me mm -hmm. and try to make fruitful things out of um, the things I had around me already and so once I was able to get those obligations out of the way I took a moment in the summer, especially with my job, to write down in my little journal, what what did I want to do? What did I need to do? And so that is why I've actually been working on a vision board. Um, mm -hmm. I've, I never thought I'd be a vision board girl, but mm -hmm. now I am. <laughs> mm -hmm. And 
I've talked to some friends about how a thing people say is next year is going to be my yes year. But for me, I think it's going to be my no year. It's going to be me saying, no, is this opportunity something I want or is it something I need? Or is it in, is it intermingled and I can't decide? Is this follow my morals, my beliefs? Will it be positive on my end or will it stress me out or will it be stressful but fruitful at the end? Mm -hmm. And so I really want to incorporate those ideas into what I create and for the future. Although going off social media for a while was a little sad, Mm -hmm. I really love to incorporate these ideas so that I don't do that and that I actually make content that I enjoy and I'm able to put my time into. And so I really hope I can continue this little content calendar I have going on and making things fruitful. I totally understand you with that. You were being selective, basically. I think you also don't want to stretch yourself too thin because if you really want to apply yourself fully into something, like you said, you wanted your work to become fruitful in the end. That probably meant that you had to make some you know, changes. And that meant that you couldn't make content as regularly anymore. But then you also on the bright side got the the fruit of your labors, right? I love what you said about maybe next year becoming your no year, being more selective with the stuff that you get into, and just like prioritizing. I think that really goes with like growing up when you're younger, you're just like, yes, taking all the opportunities as they are. And you know, never saying no to a party or something like that. But then you realize it's all about balance and learning how to prioritize and sometimes that means saying no and not not feeling bad about that because you're doing it for you know your own well-being it's really hard to say no a lot of people really um have difficulty with that actually so it's like a real test of strength to be able to do that and um I wish you all the luck (laughs) with that next year I I really hope you get to do and practice that what about like challenges that you've faced in school like in in university has there been anything that's like really rocked your world as soon as you got into USC most definitely I think Mm -hmm. everyone who enters university has a mass enters something completely different from the lifestyle they had before Mm -hmm. um I had massive sh- culture shock mm-hmm. um, entering USC. I hadn't lived in America on my own at all. And I hadn't lived in America in forever. Mm-hmm. And I've only heard things about it on social media and with my education. And so coming to USC was drastically different. Um, even just walking around USC, you run into so many like so many people with aspirations and big dreams, which is a really cool place to be in. But I remember going to drama school at USC and realizing everybody is here because they work so hard, but also everybody came in with certain things behind them. Like for instance, I've ran into people who have been acting professionally since they were born. I met into people who've been going to acting school since they started their education. And I definitely felt behind. I definitely felt like, I feel like there are times people don't feel like they belong places. Mm -hmm. Um, Especially when you move somewhere and you're on your own, you don't really have any friends yet. Mm -hmm. Um, You haven't really met your people. And so I remember coming here and being, I kind of want to go back home. I'm more familiar with that. I have my best friends there. Mm -hmm. Um, I know I'll do well because I think I did. (laughs) But I try to think about how everybody was chosen to come here for a reason Mm -hmm. because the people who accepted us saw our potential and they saw what we could do and what we can become. Mm -hmm. And so although there are times I definitely feel like I'm behind, I try to consider that they saw something in me. And just because I don't have that background in, such skills doesn't mean I'm not a good actor Mm -hmm. I could still be one and I could still grow and learn and so I feel like for instance my first acting teacher they accidentally became my acting teacher again this semester I didn't know they're going to be mine it was like last minute they put them into the time slot and at the end of the year of the semester we had a quick talk at the end of our final uh, end of our final performance and my teacher hugged me and they said Jasmine you've grown so much this year Mm -hmm. um the past year especially in your acting but also of how you guide yourself and that was a really big spotlight on how I'm happy I stayed I didn't let things hold me back Mm -hmm. and so those are the kind of things you run into at USC but that just means everybody here was just so excited to do things and to grow and enter branches yeah I can definitely feel you on that when you're just surrounded by so many talented people you almost get like imposter syndrome and you ask yourself like am I really worthy of being here but then you have to remember you wouldn't be there if you weren't so I really commend you on that and congrats on the growth that's so amazing 
Exciting. <laughs> um, well, was being a theater student everything you expected it to be? So for theater, I remember thinking, oh, wow, I'm going to become a super cool actor. I'm going to do acting all the time. And my first semester, I didn't land like some things, um, some auditions, which is part of the process. You're going to get a bunch of no's before you get a yes. Yeah. And so I definitely looked at myself down. I was reconsidering, am I even supposed to be taking theater, um, et cetera. But it actually has been very fruitful, especially this semester. Last year, my first year at USC, I actually took one acting course and everything was about theater. It was about helping behind the scenes, which I'm very thankful for. And it was about um, like writing, reading. I thought I was going to have a massive intensive, but that's what comes out of taking all the requirements at the beginning. You start getting to have those or um, intensive acting courses as you go, especially as a BA. That's what allows me to double. As a BA, you get to learn multiple things. And so I'm very thankful that I was able to take more acting courses this semester and even be in the show, which has really helped me uh, with my um, training. There are tons of professors here that I'm very thankful to have met. Mm -hmm. um, I really want to work with as many as I can before I graduate and not stick just to a few. Um, we have a large faculty, which I'm very thankful for. And I thought I would be meeting all of them at once, but clearly I need to take the courses one by one as okay. I continue to rise into different courses. Mm -hmm. And so in the end, I'm, I think it's kind of where I expected it to be, but not entirely. Mm -hmm. And it's really exciting because you never know who you want to do. Like for instance, I didn't even know one of my professors was what's it called, in grades anatomy. Oh, wow. I was, and I, I ran into her so many times and, I didn't come to my realization until everyone around me was freaking out. And I guess I could show what I didn't expect. I didn't realize that professors I had here and the resources I had were so rigorous in the entertainment industry, even outside of the school. Mm -hmm. And so um, I really want to get to know them. I really want to um, have conversations with them and see what they what words of wisdom they can provide. Mm hmm. Well, on that high note, uh, what else would you say has been your biggest accomplishment in school? And this could be in high school or now in USC. Could you tell us about that experience? I feel my biggest accomplishment that I'm quite proud of from this year is probably writing two scripts in two weeks. Wow. Um, <laughs> that was kind and of these crazy. are separate stories or <laughs> They're, to get, um, they're together. Okay, so, um, like a two-parter, something like that. So I was a part of my cultural group at the beginning of, of this year of 2022. And I was actually casted as lead for our showcase that would be at, at the beginning of April and of March. And so we'd been preparing. I memorized 120 pages of script because the director had written me in every page, which oh. was an experience. Um, I was very thankful to be put into that environment to see like, what can I handle? What can I do? How can I learn from this? Um, it was a lot, especially like, being like freshly 18 mm -hmm. trying to say yes to everything and I was really happy with the experience unfortunately we had to lose that script due to like um, for instance COVID many people got COVID from that performance so we had to scratch a script and our director had to let go of it and so um, fortunately we were given a tentative date two weeks from then everybody had lost the COVID um, healed I was fortunately in a meeting and I had the urge that I didn't want to lose this opportunity for the actors I had around me and to just lose all that hard work we had put into those 120 pages of script. Mm. And so although like I love performing, I love being on a stage, etc., I wanted to highlight the actors around me who would also put just as much time as me. And so I set a meeting, I took lead and I wrote um, two skits for them I split the cast in half and I made a comedy and I made a drama and they performed it and I had them memorize it and I was on full director mode and it was such a fun performance to see showcased in front of everybody who had come although it was a little hectic trying to get all that together it was so fruitful at the end seeing them really proud of memorizing their lines and making people laugh and making people cry and I didn't see myself writing and I wrote and it was so cool and now I have all these ideas about short films that I want to write now wow. you should definitely act on them one of my favorite things that came out of this year and I like how it's incorporated into what I want to do now um how was the writing and directing process did you like that more than the acting or is it still acting as number one for you Ooh, I feel like they're at a pretty cool equal 
Wow. I love acting, but I really love, and that's why I want to work in Gen Z entertainment. I really love supporting artists that are emerging. Mm -hmm. And so I, I was really happy to highlight them and help them grow as actors and show their different sides to themselves. And so I do really love to help create things. Um, I'm joining a film club next semester oh, wow. um, that I'm going to balance out with. I, I've checked in with the people and then I was like, "What? when are y'all meeting at night? Um, how can I add this to my schedule? Fortunately, I should be able to add it. Um, but I just, it's really cool. I love that. Um, how? Well, what's your everyday schedule like in school? Because like you have all these like extracurriculars and and like the various classes you have to take, uh, what works for you in terms of time management since you brought it up? So as of time management, I've really had a big thing since my freshman year to have no classes on Friday. Um, mm -hmm. I really love that freedom of being able to choose my classes in college mm -hmm. and able to, in being able to make my schedule, have no classes on Fridays. And so because of that, I've been able to add my job as a tour guide every Friday. So that's a part of my week. So it's not very, um, stressful on me to do it at the same time throughout the week. So I have classes Monday to Thursday, a typical day. I usually have classes starting at 10 a.m. Yes, not 8. <laughs> um, and I usually end around 4. And so I've been fortunate to put like hour blocks in between. Um, I know some people don't have blocks and it's like a rush to get to the next class. So mm -hmm. that's a very happy thing I have. I usually try to incorporate cycling into my days. Oh, wow. So um usually I go to class I go to cycling after um in between classes I like to scroll through Instagram and look at any trending audios that I could save to my um account for future usage I love looking at um, my Pinterest boards I like to see I like to make um boards in regards to any future projects I want to make or any quotes I just need to keep going um like for instance I could literally show you my my phone screen it's just a bunch of Aww. things that keep me going in the day I love that. and so I usually do that in between classes um and I still try to make time to cook for myself just because wow. I'm very fortunate to have a kitchen now mm -hmm. <laughs> on my freshman year I didn't have one so um it's usually that and then afterwards I have meetings at nighttime for any of my organizations um, this semester, I actually had rehearsals from 6 to 10 p.m. And oh so gosh. that took a massive chunk of my time this semester, um, every weekday and weekend for certain times. So um, that's what my schedule looked like a lot this sem semester. But this upcoming semester is a little bit more lenient and a little more focused on classes. And so I'll be making a lot of time for that. But when I do do my coursework, um, I love to find any local cafes around LA and take a friend with me, maybe um, take the pictures with their like matcha lattes or whatever, <laughs> um, and just study there for as long as I can until they close. <laughs> I love the matcha lattes. And I feel like you just have a really good grasp with like work-life balance, because even when you're resting, you're still looking for inspiration and even if it's like a leisurely thing like going to a cafe so make sure that you like hit so many birds with that one stone you've created content you've um had a social you know interaction with a friend plus you get to studying which is really amazing and I think you have you you're really good with the time management this is, is all I can like take from all that you've said well what about study habits like what are the best study habits that work for you so for me, my best study habits are what's it called strategy that a couple of my friends have offered to me. It has been very fruitful for me. And when I first looked into it, I was very at odds. I said, why would you do that? That's so weird. Mm -hmm. But um, I forgot what it's called. But it's when you put on a timer and you study for 25 minutes. Oh. And then once that hits, you have a five minute break to do whatever you need. Use the it, bathroom, yeah. scroll through your phone. And so then I alternate that for a while and it really gets me going. I actually really enjoy writing essays. And mm -hmm. so this really helps oh, me wow. because I don't start essays writing. That sounds weird, mm -hmm. um, but I, I live by outlines. I live by organizing things. Mm -hmm. And so having that, when I outline my essays, I outline my entire essay before I write it. It makes things go by so much faster so for me. That's true, yes. Um, and it really helps me incorporate my ideas. And usually I find myself writing over the word count which I feel like 
And that's Should better. Be case? That's <laughs> better than you know, um, less of the word count actually. Yeah. So, um, that's been a massive study habit that I think has been incredibly helpful for me. Maybe mm-hmm. be over helpful if we talk about my word count <laughs> for my essays. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's a massive study habit. Um, I live by Google Calendar. I live by writing my own schedules for the day. Mm-hmm. I used to um. What's it called? Oh God, they're in my notebook. This is my everything notebook. I write all my ideas and my everything's in there. But I usually um, write down my whole schedule for the day, the night before, even though I have Google Calendar. Mm-hmm. I love having a physical attribute, but also a technological attribute if I ever need to switch between the two. I love that. That method is actually, I think it's called Pomodoro method. Mm-hmm. There right? you go. Yeah, uh, we also have that. Uh, you could, You guys can check out um, the homework help blog. We talk about the Pomodoro effect all the time. We love that method. And so you pretty much nailed it with everything um, with the planners and the essays. Uh, outlining is super, super important. Obviously, you guys ever need help with custom essays? Obviously, that's what homework help global is for. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you can listen to Jasmine, just create an outline, right? And do your readings. And that's how you actually, you know, hit your word count for all that essay needs. I love that. We're such big fans of the Pomodoro method. I wanted to ask you, since you've been pretty much all around the globe, you've lived in Japan, you now live in the US, you're a Filipina. Have you lived in the Philippines? Or have you been to the country before? I have visited the Philippines a number mm-hmm. of times. I was very fortunate to live in Japan because mm-hmm. that made life so much cheaper yeah. to visit maybe during winter break. So um, I think growing up, I went there about sorry, my seating. I think mm-hmm. I went there about three to four times to visit family Mm -hmm. um, which I really love I was very fortunate to be um, raised in a household where we spoke in Tagalog Mm -hmm. which is the language in the Philippines one of the many dialects yeah and so um having that family time to speak in Tagalog Mm -hmm. I was able to incorporate that in the Philippines when I visited family or whenever we'd have what's it called on on the military base sometimes we'd get we would have people move from the Philippines um, who, do, who didn't speak English um, mm-hmm. because of like their parents or et cetera. Mm-hmm. And so I was really fortunate to, I'm out of Tagalog, I know, <laughs> to be the translator and help them in biology, which is already not my thing. Mm-hmm. So that's something from my time in the Philippines that I've incorporated into my life. I love that. And how do you think living in different countries has impacted your worldview? if it's changed anything Mm -hmm. so um we actually just covered this in one of my favorite classes this semester Mm -hmm. um I took a theater class called performing identities and we talk about the intersectionality of identity how it's more than just one definition and how performance is more than one thing Mm -hmm. and so we talked about the culture kids I didn't know that was a term but maybe now we Mm -hmm. know um these are people who don't live in their homeland or their country of passport um, growing up and they suddenly come and that is me I'm suddenly living in America I've always been an American citizen but have I felt like one that's another story mm-hmm. and so being a third culture kid has really developed me into the person I am today mm-hmm. um growing abroad in Japan where I actually don't speak Japanese which mm-hmm. I wish I did um I want I'm, I'm gonna work on that one day um has really like taught me to appreciate the culture around me my host country I was surrounded by Japanese culture my whole life Mm -hmm. but I was also surrounded by social media which showed me what was going on in America that was my grasp and then also the military-based community I had around me it was either I was moving or people around me were moving Mm -hmm. and these were multiple different um lengths of time it was either this person lived on our military base for like a year or three years or a couple months or they moved in the middle of the school year and so it was just a constant changing of environment changing of people around me and this has really helped me in university life just because there are so many different people here and you always meet somebody different in line I'm an avid person my friend um quoted me for being very notorious for talking to people I don't know and just wanting to be their friend I I love Mm -hmm. meeting people I feel like they always have something different and like a really cool story to say I feel like everyone has a fun story and so that's why I love being in um, social events to meet people like this and with being a military child and that aspect I had a, a military base I'm just always surrounded by changing environments changing people 
And um, especially in a different country, things are always on the move. And I feel like that's who I am. I always try to be on the move. I always try to find new things going on in LA, even though I maybe have never gone there before. Mm-hmm. I love looking for flea markets. I love looking for um, different clubs or any organizations holding things, even if I don't know anything. For instance, I went to my first dance performance in this really cool setting not too far from campus. And they had student artists who danced and um, were selling their small business goods. And I just started talking to people. <laughs> and I'm friends with a couple of them Mm -hmm. which is really fun I don't think if I had not had this environment I don't know if I'd be the person I am today Mm -hmm. and so I know some people live in one place their whole life and they develop from that and I'm sure it's a great opportunity sometimes I wonder what would have happened to me if I had done that Mm -hmm. but um, I'm very thankful for this unique lifestyle I was able to have it just has really been fruitful and let me meet people of different backgrounds and cultures and stories yeah and it's made you more adaptable and more open to learning about other cultures it's it's definitely fascinating being able it's it's a privilege honestly to get to live in all these different countries if you had to choose one what would you choose anywhere else in the world to live may could be from the places you've already lived or maybe somewhere completely different a massive thing that's been on my mind lately just because i've been talking to some rising graduates Mm -hmm. um rising undergrads is um new york oh my gosh Mm -hmm. city of dreams um Mm -hmm. I say that just because I've learned about um, the acting community there and how tight knit it is. Um, Just there's always a difference in how um, entertainment is pursued in different areas in the world. Mm -hmm. And so um, I had a friend who entered there over the summer named Zella, and she told me all about it and how so drastically different it is compared to how entertainment is pursued in LA. Mm -hmm. And I just really love to throw myself into that environment (laughs) and see where it goes. When I grow up, I, gosh, I've already grown up, but I always think I'm growing up. I love, I like having that mindset. I was just having this conversation with my parents about how when I have a career and wherever I have it, I'd really love for it to be something that allows me to move and maybe live in places for a short period of time and explore different places around the world. I'd love to just be on the go. And that's why I was talking to them and I was like, I'm not sure I'd want to live in a house because then I'd have to be mm-hmm. there. <laughs> I'd love yeah. to live in like an apartment and just be on the go. Like, yeah. I remember when I moved again in Japan to a different place, I was moving um, to a, no- a new apartment before moving to college and so I packed everything I owned into two suitcases and Mm -hmm. that's what I brought back to college and so now those two suitcases live with me everywhere I go and I just I feel like I'd be very aligned with a lifestyle that allows me to put myself in different environments all the time and meet different people I love that you gotta put that on your um, vision board like just a photo of NYC and really manifest that (laughs) Uh, I believe you can do that you have this like goal getter energy and I think you're just like not afraid to like take opportunities and you don't just want to settle you know for like actors it's either you know LA or New York so I hope that's really in the cards for you and I don't doubt that if that it is well if it wasn't for your university life path right now what else do you think you would be possibly doing if you weren't like in theater or in USC if I wasn't doing theater if I wasn't at USC I actually had a little plan set up I talked about it with my English teacher on my that by the end of my senior year Mm -hmm. um I had done a showcase just for fun um online for um the thespian festival which is one of the like educational troops in the country for theater. And I, I did a little monologue about k- having my first kiss with a boy with a bagger <laughs> and some grind in my heart. I know those lines. <laughs> um, and I got scouted by a, a Nickelodeon casting director for voice acting. Mm-hmm. And she reached out to me, which I, I didn't think that was going to happen. I was I was just doing it for fun because I wanted to tell my troop about it and have them do it the following year without me when I graduate. She reached out to me. She sent me a script. We had an individual call just one on one outside mm-hmm. of the festival. And she told me about how she wanted to work with me and she wanted me to audition for some Nickelodeon show. And I was like, okay somebody likes me um but now looking back again I'm like oh she was just so excited to do stuff she was like 17 so I like I pursued that for a little bit although things didn't work out I was very fortunate for the opportunity but I did have my eyes set on going to the academy which is acting school based in Hollywood and Hathaway went there some cool people um and so I really had my eyes set on that school because not too long after that I got accepted for winter 2022 that would be right now and so my mindset was 
I'm going to focus on. If this works out, I'm going to take a gap year, which I don't really need to. I mean, I was accepted to winter 2022. And I would focus on acting. I would focus on um, possibly working for Nickelodeon. That was a big thing I had going on for me. I'd emailed her a couple times. Um, that was a mindset I had for a while. But then I got into USC and I was like, this is my dream school. Opportunities will come. I'm very fortunate to be surrounded by rising individuals in our film school or drama school, etc., who are already trying to reach that way, like peering into Hollywood's backyard. And so I ended up going here, but that would have been cool. Like who knows what would have happened. But if I had entered either path, I think something fruitful would have happened. So if it, if it's not you at theater in USC, it was still acting just elsewhere, basically. Elsewhere, yeah. <laughs> I love that you're just like really set on on acting, and that's that. It's really nice to see that sort of passion. Well, people say college can be really draining at times. Uh, what can you say to students who experience this? Um, maybe something that has worked for you in the past when you were low on motivation or just like felt overwhelmed in school so I've definitely been overwhelmed with school especially with like classes and social life and like my own mental health and so I definitely recommend as I said saying no um it's hard but once you start doing it it gets easier I guess or it gets better Mm -hmm. I definitely took into notation um podcasts I never thought I'd be a podcast girl, but I am. And so I like started listening to podcasts like How to Be a Better Human. Um, there's some other things down there on my Spotify. And they really helped with my mindset and like thinking about, for instance, it doesn't teach you how to be a better human. It teaches you or like what's like the perfect person and how can you become more considerate and think in a better mindset. And so I definitely recommend like looking into those. There's some really cool, positive podcasts that focus on mental health, which I really enjoy. I've been a big journal person this last year I used to follow prompts but honestly it's just whatever you're feeling in the moment I feel like writing it down then giving it out loud maybe is a little bit more healthier and very considerate of your own mental health I think that's been very fruitful for me Mm -hmm. and so I hope that's fruitful for other people but I definitely especially with my students that I've had like over the summer I was an orientation advisor a big thing I helped I told these rising freshmen was you have so many resources at school Mm -hmm. that you're paying for please use them for instance there's like therapists on campus people Mm -hmm. are scared to use them but they're Mm -hmm. there and they want to help you and for instance I tell them like every floor in the student union has an organization that has um, mental health providers who align with that certain um, identity like for the LGBTQ plus center or for like the Asian Pacific American Students Services, they have resources there and they want to help you. And it's all under your tuition. So you should definitely take usage of it. That is something I try incorporating in myself. And I feel like you see a lot of people who you think are doing so amazing, but they're also looking for help mm-hmm. and they're also taking advantage of those resources. So definitely like look into what resources do you have at your educational institution and how can you apply that to yourself? That's a really good advice. And because mental health... Um... Um, I think it's like really important to talk about. Um, A lot of people don't like to seek help. A lot of people compare themselves with other people. And like you said, it doesn't look like people can be struggling, but they are. So, you know, always remember to just be kind to everyone. You never know what kind of battle they are facing. And the podcasts, I mean, I love listening to podcasts as well, like, you know, to better yourself, you know, the homework help global podcast is always here guys when we relaunch now that you're not only just a podcast girl now you're actually one of those guests who get to impart knowledge and wisdom to the listeners and I feel like a lot of students are really gonna relate to all the stuff that you're saying today so I just wanted to say you know thank you again for being here I did also want to ask like what does the dream life look for you the dream life for me (laughs) for me it's Mm -hmm. highlighting emerging people I feel like around me especially in LA there's someone who wants wants to do so much and has so many dreams and aspirations I want to help them get there I want to help them whether that be like with work or with their own mental health I'd love to be someone to support them and so that's why I really want to help with emerging Gen Z artists and entertainment whether that be in music whether that be in journalism whether that be in acting I really want to help them I was very fortunate to work on a recent project just last week with some really cool creatives externally from my university and I helped them with casting some really cool people that I knew were going to do great things in the future and I was really happy to 
to get them in a part of that project and help them build the resume, help them build their acting reels. I was fortunate to be in it too. I didn't know I was going to be in it. I thought they just needed help. <laughs> but that was like one of the big things that made me realize, oh, this is what I want to do. I want to help actors find rising artists in different fields and work together. And I want to do this in different ways, not just actors, but maybe things like from instance, um, my magazine, we're, we're called Scene Magazine because mm-hmm. the SC stands for SoCal for our university SC. Mm-hmm. And our phrase is, we tell your stories, you set the scene SC. So the USC is mm-hmm. still there. We really have a massive storytelling in regards to writing and creating multimedia projects for rising um, student artists in different fields. We covered people in business, people in um, architecture, people in acting and film, etc. Um, we did a piece on my friend Dove and um, I actually got to work on her multimedia piece, which was a little short I made with my team and um, I just really hope that this helps her in regards to what she wants to do in the future as a film and as of that sort of writing so um, that's just a small step but I hope I could incorporate that into anything else that I do in the future and expand on how else I could do this whether that be writing um, filming um, etc. I love that Um, in terms of content creation what tips can you share for your content to be relatable? I feel to make your content relatable be yourself like I feel like it's really simple but like for instance like I know I used to like write small captions I try to copy like big celebrities but that's because that's where they are and they don't Mm -hmm really need to strategize how they upload like Mm -hmm. if someone has like a bajillion followers their strategy is definitely going to be different from me as a small creator and so just to really be yourself big captions are fine the things you create are fine people love knowing about what you want to do and just to do what aligns with your what aligns with your goals and your mindset your creative mindset and for instance I started doing fashion as I mentioned earlier and although that was a little scary to enter Mm -hmm. I started realizing what works for me what am I comfortable with what am I capable with and what aligns with my audience and do they want to see this and so just to focus on who is your audience what are you creating and how does it align with them um so you did say that your niche is becoming fashion is there any fashion advice that you could impart with us today oh my goodness I am guilty I'm very guilty of shopping fast fashion all the time before Mm -hmm. I, I still do it a big thing that I've added to my own closet is focusing on essentials and long-term clothing that I know will last me for a long time even past trends Mm -hmm. I love trends I think they're really cool I like being on trend Mm -hmm. but I think there's a difference between trend and fashion and I think fashion is so multi-faceted and um, so emerging and long term and Mm -hmm. so I still shop from certain fast fashion but I've really found myself looking at small businesses that incorporate like thrifting flea market etc I really appreciate the hand work that they do on these things to create beautiful pieces of clothing and do them at such a price that is affordable or etc and for instance I'm literally wearing something from a small business right now this is from Nita's box LA and then this is from Sunk Kiss and I um and my top is Zara um, really pretty so, thank you <laughs> they and look so, like the sun from the Philippine flag yeah that's what it's supposed to be they're called Ara earrings um, I love, I love that. wearing them <laughs> I like to incorporate my culture into things I do, like reaching out to small Filipino businesses sometimes. Mm -hmm. Um, But definitely like look around you, what small businesses are around you, how could you support them and maybe incorporate that into your own content. But yeah, I definitely say like solid pieces are super cool, but that doesn't mean you can't, that can't stop you from grabbing really bright colors, pretty Mm -hmm. patterns, et cetera. Like I I don't stop, but I love having my essentials. I love having my jeans. I love having my gold jewelry that lasts forever. Mm -hmm. Um, these ones so yeah that's, that's what really good advice really good advice that I personally follow as well building on the essentials not being afraid to indulge or splurge in really good quality items instead of you know piling on a bunch of fast fashion items that are going to break in a few months or even after one wear yeah. um, so that's really good advice just going back to acting before we end in a little what's one role that is your favorite a role you've had to act in do you have one probably the role of Maria so I have some really creative cool friends that focus a lot on 
activism mm-hmm. in film. And so my uh, my friend Amos makes a ton of cool things like that. And um, I was casted for their film called Maria. And it was in regards to East Asian, Southeast Asian representation in the Asian community. And so the fourth short film hasn't come out yet. But I could say I could talk a little bit about it. Mm-hmm. But it's in regards to Stop Asian Hate. That's what it was called mm-hmm. um, in like 2020, 2021. Um, it's still ongoing. There's, it's, still, it's still happening. It's in regards to how Asian representation oh. and how it's primarily East Asian and Southeast Asian, South Asian really isn't in the picture, but it's growing. It's trying to. And so in the film, everyone is East Asian except for Maria. Mm. I am Southeast Asian. I played as a maid with a child. I've never worked in that age, but I did. I had some really cool creatives that made me feel comfortable on set and exploring with this different type of acting. It's a film on activism and that sort of representation. And there's a part where we enter the mind of Maria that's very, very strong and I'm really excited for that to come out and I think it's a piece people should see and not just because it was a cool acting opportunity but because of the story behind it and I think it really aligns with you you know your original goal of being that representation for people of color and Asian people I think that's like really inspiring um and I love that is this gonna come out anytime soon can people like watch this or um I think it's going to be coming out in a couple months if anything I'll upload it on my Instagram or whatever that's a big project I'm excited about about and some other things oh we're really excited for you as well we'll keep an eye out on that and you know let our viewers know when that comes out so we can support i have only a few questions left um hope you don't mind this is something i always like to ask our guests if you could tell yourself your younger self anything what would it be if i could tell my younger self anything i would tell them it's okay (laughs) it's your path not the path of those around you definitely it's your story not others and that you're the one who paves it. I feel like growing up, I try to do the things that other people were doing so that they'd like me. And I think now that I've grown, I've learned that I don't need to make everyone align with my goals and my mindset. Everybody is thinking about their goals too. And so that just, you're the main character in your story, not in theirs. Everybody has something going on with their side of their story. And so focus on your story and how you could emerge into that. And it's all your choice. I love that. Yeah, um, I feel like what you were trying to say is, like not to think too much about what others think like you might think people always like you know notice those little things that only you do but really everyone's stuck in their own head uh worrying about their own problems and they're not out here worrying about you so just like stick to your path right I love that do you have a favorite motivational quote that you'd like to share let me look at my (laughs) let me look at my (laughs) mood board yeah what's the best one out of there (laughs) okay I have one stop punishing yourself it's behind you now look forward and I think that's a big thing that I incorporate in my life there's definitely things that have happened positive negative and no matter what the outcome I push it forward and I apply it positively in my life and learn from it rather than burden from it what about a social media platform which is your favorite i love my instagram Mm -hmm. (laughs) i love instagram Mm -hmm. um i love the my explore page and the the, all the new content that's related to what i am interested in always there i really appreciate that algorithm really love how it functions i like where it's going i know they just added a notes thing on your um oh yeah the status yeah it's like like kind of fun (laughs) yeah have you been using it it's really fun yeah i kind of have been using it it's really cool to just like be like oh send your thoughts out finals (laughs) and then respond and talk to people that's so fun and i really love the function of reels started making reels like my junior year of high school Mm -hmm. and just seeing how they've developed that as a platform to Mm -hmm. now i i think it's been so cool and i really and that's why i really really enjoy making tiny videos when i can Mm -hmm. I love Instagram. Um, You know what I did want to ask you, like, how was school like when you were in high school and it was the pandemic? Like, um, what year were you in, basically, when you had to, like, stop going to school face to face? I think it was, what was it? March 13th, 2020, the date mm-hmm. everyone knows. Um, that was, I remember being in Spanish class and getting that announcement on the PR mm-hmm. and everybody was recording each other and laughing. And then suddenly we were online. On lockdown. <laughs> yeah, it was um, the but... junior year or? <laughs> yes, it was the end of my junior year. So Gosh. I don't know. I, you I got to this finals. Yeah, <laughs> you, you basically spent your whole senior year of high school at home. 
that's what it was like. To, yeah, to a certain extent. Mm-hmm. Um, I was really fortunate to be attending Dodea schools, which mm-hmm. are the schools military children take abroad in American military bases. Mm-hmm. And um, with that also came, um, I actually got to go back in person to school mm-hmm. um, late September, October. Mm-hmm. And so I get this, I got to spend the rest of it um, in person with masks, mm-hmm. which I'm very happy about. Um, I was very thankful to have that because I know not everybody did. I know some people spent their whole senior year in their house. Is, oh, so you had that edge. Okay. Yeah, that is very unfortunate. But uh, I'm fortunate for having the ability to attend school in person. I didn't realize, sometimes <laughs> you don't realize what you have until it's gone. And, yeah, absolutely. Um, very happy to do that for my senior year and to still like meet all these people do all these things in high school before I graduated but that's what high school looked for me it was fun I was very thankful for the things that the military allowed me to do with my education we were able to attend music um festivals and drama competitions in Korea and in Iwakuni um, that's another place in Japan so we were allowed air travel etc and this was all during like COVID time still this was like 2020 oh, or 2021 this is um Right before, right before I was oh, right traveling before. for okay. work, uh, for school. When I came online, we switched digitally, but I was really happy to be able to meet all these people, even if it was on Zoom calls or from a distance. Oh, yeah. I remember seeing you went to, you did go to Korea. Um, That was a school event. What did you guys do there? Um, I had a drama festival there. So basically, we had over 100 people represent their high schools from Dodea schools in Korea, Guam, and Japan. So we all met up in there um, and we had a festival. And every school performed their own um, one act. Um, ours was called Booby Trap. And it was about it's a very sad story. It's about a man who's in the army and he accidentally sits on a stump of a tree, which has a grenade on it. And so the oh, whole story no. is about his life passing by before, after I played his son grown up in high school with his first date me um and um it was just like all his life passing by and it was just a very um heartwarming sad story Mm -hmm. um but that was really cool there were awards we got the second most prestigious award which i'm very happy about that was really cool especially being like 15 and just Mm -hmm. acting and being like whoa we did that um and then also every single person performs for certain judges to see if they make it to um, the stage with like monologues or scenes. And I was fortunate to get on set and we got a quite prestigious award for me and this other person seeing it performance. That was one of my favorite things doing there. We got to explore the country for a week. It was really cool. Um, and I did the same thing for a music festival, kind of the same. <laughs> that sounds like a really cool experience. So what is next for you? Uh, Do you have any like goals that are in the nearby future or just like something you want to achieve anytime soon? My goals, this is the thing I was having with some friends. We were talking about our 2023 visions. I really, really want to work for We're Not Really Strangers. Um, I've been looking at their internship opportunities trying to see how I can build my portfolio for that is that the card game the yeah it's the card game the red and white cards I really want to work for them one day that was one of my really big big goals another thing is I want to help create a short film Mm -hmm. at least one I would be so excited I've been in them it's been a great opportunity but I want to make one and put my creative mindset out there and so Mm -hmm. I'm really excited for the team I might have with that in the future whatever that may be I'm really excited to start my public relations classes it's going to be hard I have to start taking 20 units a semester after next semester tuition is 18 so we're really grinding but (laughs) I'm very excited about it um it is I'm excited for the fruit of that labor that's going to be like um about three years from now but Mm -hmm. I'm excited to put that time in and I'm going to make the time for it and not give it my extra time I'm going to organize it so it's definitely going to be a bit stressful but I'm super excited for that upcoming future. Excited to start tour guiding people. (laughs) I'm excited to help rising students enter USC. And I just hope I can continue doing that with my own platform. Um, That's a big thing I really want to start incorporating. I have a couple college videos, but I want to expand on that in aligning with um, fashion as well. I love that. I really hope you continue to guide and inspire people around you. I feel like that is like your true calling. You just love helping people. You said your goals. One of them is to help everyone like succeed around you and help them 
with their paths. And I think that's really amazing and inspiring. I hope you continue to do that more as you flourish in your academic career. Is there anything else you would love to share to our audience? You have this platform, you can say anything, impart anything. The stage is yours. (laughs) A quote from one of my friends told me was surround yourself with people who are good for your mental health. Another thing is right people will speak your name in a room of opportunity. Mm -hmm. And I hope to be the right people (laughs) and um, be able to provide and help bring those opportunities to my creative friends who are trying to enter the industry. That's it. (laughs) Um, You know, honestly, it's been such a joy talking to you. Thank you so much. You have this like, like an optimistic spirit to you and you just like love to help. And I really feel like that's in the future for you. Thank you so much for taking the time being here on our podcast do you want to plug in your social social media platforms do you want to share them with the audience so they can follow sure. you um if y'all want to see some of the things i make my username on instagram is jasmine Aquino. it's spelled really funky because my mom likes unique spelling <laughs> it's j-a-z-m-y-n-e Aquino, a-q-u-i-n-o and just be looking forward to the future i hope you all enjoy this little podcast and things that will come up soon Thank you so much, Jasmine. And thank you again to our amazing listeners. We will be sharing the links to Jasmine's <laughs> social media in the description. Follow us as well on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and TikTok. That's at Homework Help Global. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And of course, subscribe to Jasmine on all her social media platforms. And thank you for joining us today on another episode of the Homework Help Show. Thank you again, Jasmine, for being here. And um, I hope you have an amazing okay. holiday season. And good luck on everything. And we hope to see you soon on the big screen as a really amazing actress <laughs> uh, likewise thank, thank you so much for being here um, have an amazing day ahead you as well ciao